Um, I don't care that you're a Christian. I don't care what the Bible says. Like, I feel like it's a clown show, like sitting here trying to decipher what your little mythical book has to say about these very real political issues, right? I don't care if you're Christian. In fact, I will fight for you to have your religious liberty and practice your Christianity. I believe in that. I don't believe in Christianity, which means that you do not get to dictate the way I live my life based on your religion. I don't care what the Bible says. You have every right in the world. All those women who identify with your religion have every right in the world to not get an abortion, to not take birth control, but they do not have the right to dictate my life and what I decide to do with my body. I don't care about your God religion. I'm so tired of having nonstop conversations about what the Bible says. You live your life in the way that you interpret the Bible. Again, I don't care, but you don't get to take the Bible and tell me, well, the Bible says this in this chapter and this verse, I don't care. I don't care. I don't believe in it. And I have the right based on our constitution to not believe in it. Travis, talk to me about this bill. This is uh, essentially criminalizing religious beliefs. And I don't mean to speak in hyperbole here, but if this bill were to pass, would this uh, prohibit the sale of the Bible that teaches these things about sexual morality? Well, literally, according to how this law is written, yes, it would. This is, you know, PC culture, politically correct culture, gone horribly awry. This is really directly hitting at our First Amendment rights as American citizens. Now the Democrat legislators in this building right behind me, the California State Legislature, they want to tell you how to think, what sort of books that you can read, write, and purchase. We're not living in normal. This is a group of, of grown men who dress as nuns. They openly mock the Christian faith. Uh, their motto is go forth and sin more. And I think it's absolutely cowardly that the Dodgers revoked this and reinvited them. And it proves that they're more concerned with pandering to this small minority of people to appease the woke crowd, to earn back these social justice points, and le less concerned with their fan base of Christians. We're not living in normal. Marriage is between a man and a woman, and states must respect that. Why do we need a constitutional amendment? Marriage is between a man and a woman. What's the game going on here? The same-sex marriage must be recognized as legal in every state in the nation. I sign the Respect for Marriage Act in the law. Deciding whether to marry, who to marry, is one of the most profound decisions a person can make. We're not living in normal. We're here! We're queer! We're here! We're here! We're queer! Don't f with us! We'll f love! We're here! We're queer! Like I said, I am Maxwell. I am trans. I am big gay baby. My pronouns are they, them. What are yours? We're not living in normal. We're not living in normal. My point is, apparently, the XXXY chromosomes are insufficient. Because when we wake up in the morning, we exaggerate whatever feature we want to portray the gender of our choice. Mm. Either the one you're assigned, the one you choose to be, whatever it is. And so now, here, so, so now just to, to tie a bow on this, I say to you, somewhere I read, somewhere I, well, I think I read that the United States was a land where we have the pursuit of happiness. 
this. Yes. Suppose no matter my chromosomes, today I feel 80% female, 20% male. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on makeup. I'm gonna do that. Um, tomorrow I might feel 80% male. I'll remove the makeup and I'll wear a muscle shirt. Why do you care? What, 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 what business is it of yours to require that I fulfill your inability to think of gender on a spectrum? Caitlyn Jenner a name none of us had heard till six months ago, has in that short time helped teach America what it means to live a courageous and authentic life. For years and years, I never felt like I fit in anywhere. I always felt as an outsider. I never felt good in the male side and I wasn't obviously in the female side. I was kind of stuck in the middle. But all of a sudden, after making this decision and coming out, it was by far the best thing I ever did. My name is Dylan Mulvaney. I am a trans woman, and I am documenting my transition publicly on TikTok for the world to see. Mr. President, this is my 221st day of publicly transitioning. God and love it. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender-affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that as a moral question and as a legal question. I just think it's wrong. I mean, uh, you know, no, no state should be able to do that in my view. So I feel very, very strongly that, uh, that you should have every single solitary right, including, including use of the, your gender identity bathrooms in public. Day 66, being a girl, and today I'm in nature. Trees, I love them. Water, lakes, I love them. Heels, they're my hiking heels. I love them. Okay, come on. Ah, ah, ah. Like the articles written about me using he pronouns and calling me a man over and over again. And I, I feel like that should be illegal. I, I don't know, that's, that's just bad journalism. If you're a of 2018, Peter Vlaming was fired from his job as a French language teacher in a Virginia school district because he refused to refer to a transgender student by the student's preferred pronouns. Vlaming's Christian belief prevented him from bowing before the notion that the student who had been a she in his class the year before was now suddenly a he. Vlaming was willing to use the student's chosen new name, but he avoided using any pronouns when referring to this student. That wasn't good enough for the school district. They needed to hear him say the words. We're not living in normal. And let me make this very clear. You don't have a choice whether or not you learn about LGBTQ plus in school. You don't have a choice. It's one of our values, the British values. And if you refuse to do it, that will be dealt with severely. And if you say something that's derogatory or can hurt somebody else in this room, that is very serious. And it's as, as serious as if you were using racist language. You do not do it. Okay? That's, that's the value, that's the approach we take in this school. And if there are people sat here who don't agree with what I'm saying, you need to go home and have a conversation with your parents and say, why are my values so different to what, the, what Britain is? Why, why, why have I got this view? Where does it come from? The only thing that you can be taken out of is sex education. And that is from your, when your parents speak to me and get permission. Nobody in this room has, has done that. LGBTQ is not sex education. That is relationships. Okay? You do not have the authority or the ability to refuse to do it. I cannot tell you how much having people not recognize who I am and openly say that they don't value who I am. Because when you say I don't agree with LGBTQ people, you're saying you don't value me. I've given a lot to this world. I'm a good person. I've adopted two children. I've given them a fresh start. I'm a good human being. Why should I be judged based on who I choose to love? Whether you agree or not. Don't say something that's going to make me or someone like me feel less than, who, less than human. Yeah? Just think on that the next time you say something. And also be aware and this has an obligation. If anything happens like that in this room, she has to then deal with it in a very serious way. I'm hoping you don't choose to make the right choices because of it.
sanctioned, I'm hoping you're saying, actually, I won't say it because it might hurt somebody else. Has anyone got any questions before I go? No. All right, thank you. When was the last time you watched a, a show? Um, and when I say a show, I don't mean like a single episode, but when was the last time you watched a series, right? Just think about your favorite series, right? Whatever series it is that you like. When was the last time you watched a series on television that did not have a gay character? I'm Penny Polar Bear. I live with my mommy and my other mommy. One mommy is a doctor and one mommy cooks spaghetti. I love spaghetti. What if Patty's his sister, then... Who is Mr. Ratburn marrying? <laughs> this family has two mommies. They love each other so proudly. And they all go marching in the big Everybody, everybody, I want you to meet my brother Dave. Hi. His husband Frank. Hi. And my sobrina Mia. Hi. My niece. Hi, Mia. <laughs> Poppy, Daddy, Sesame Street is even more amazing than he said. Hey, Gonzo, you okay? Not exactly. I really wish I could wear one of those princess dresses to the ball. Um, hello, everyone. Ooh. Huh? Uh, 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 look, it's. it's. A mysterious new princess! Ooh, I like mysteries! Huh. Where's this? Home. My mom's. I mean, you just, you can't turn on the TV without seeing it. Now you, now there are commercials and the commercials come out and when the commercials are about, you see gay characters or, or, or gay couples in the commercials. Oh, you remember my Gemma? Gemma? And what's your name? It's James. James? Allo Moi aussi je pensais à toi. Je regardais notre photo de classe. Toi aussi tu me manques. Faut que je te laisse, il y a mon père qui arrive. Je t'embrasse. Tiens C'est ta photo de classe hein j'avais la même tête que toi à ton âge. Je peux te dire que je faisais un vrai carton avec les nanas. Dommage qu'il y ait que des garçons dans ta classe. T'aurais toutes tes chances. We're not living in normal. You think somebody's getting away with something? Guess again. And you place your hand on the Word of God and pledge to do the very things that blaspheme His name. <laughs> 